Welcome Central to the Central News Center. This is period one. I'm Jonah. I'm Lewis. We're going to start off by talking about some different clubs around GFC. Noah has the story. Okay. So I'm here with the activities director. Tony Bina. Um, so so why, why should students join clubs? Students join clubs, I think, for one, they want to get involved. They want to be a part of something, part of the school. And it's a chance for them to meet other students as well and kind of do different things among school. And right now we have about 24 plus clubs that kids have the opportunity to join. And it gives them a sense of participation, a sense of you know, ownership, and a sense of you know, being part of the tradition at Central High School. Can you tell me a few clubs that some people might not know about? Um, one might be the Politics Club, just because it's fairly new. I uh, just started last year. It was a club that meets I think once or twice a month that you know talk about government you know things, uh, talk about uh, just politics in general, what happens in our government, uh, you know what happens in our own state, what happens in our own city. Just talk about political issues, and uh, they try to expand and do some things in the school. You know, last year they held a mock election during the presidential election here. Um, They've done a few other things throughout the school, but you know, being new, most people may not have noticed them yet. Um, sometimes I think our foreign language clubs, just because of the location of where they're at in the building, they do a lot of great things, but people don't always necessarily see what they're doing. The meetings that take place are typically down in their classrooms too, and uh, that might be something people are real familiar with as well. Do you think there's something for everybody? Yeah. I really think, uh, I should probably rephrase that. Is there something for everybody? Yes, but does that mean everybody wants to be a part of something? Not necessarily, but I think there's enough opportunities out there that could gain at least somebody's interest to join something. And it's a real diverse group of clubs from business to foreign language, to marketing, to academics, to music, um, student leadership. There's so many different things people can get involved in here. And a lot of students get involved in more than just one. Um, where can students go to sign up for clubs? One spot they can go is they can stop here at the activities office. I can inform them of the different options that we have and they can get signed up. Uh, if they have a specific interest, like say for example, if they want to be in DECA, part of that's related with the class. Um, and maybe if they know who the advisor is, they can join that club directly by just seeing who the advisor is. For example, Tech Club. Uh, Mr. Gunderson, Mr. Carlson are the advisors there. They have announcements periodically and people can go see them directly to join. They don't have to come see me first. Thanks, Noah. And our second story was with Anthony talking about Robotics Club. Hi, I'm Anthony for the Central News Center, and I'm interviewing Zach Jenkins about the Robotics Club. So, hello. Um, what are you working on in the robotics? Uh, right now, we're working on a robot. It. Robot. Um, <laughs> uh, we make robots uh, for using Vex Robotics uh, items to compete in competitions, uh, to pick up cones and put them on other cones. Okay, great. Um, so how does it, your robot work? Like, well, our this first design was that it had, there's this thing, cones that you are weighted, they're called moguls. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lift uh, thing that goes down, goes under it, and lifts it up a little bit to move them over the pipes to score. Um, we are also work, we're working on a scissor lift to grab the smaller yellow cones, but we did not get that done for the first competition. Mm -hmm. So um, Jacob is the one who um, <laughs> stop laughing had, had the idea to make the scissor lift and built the scissor lift, and now he threw it away because he has a better idea for it. Okay, um, so you mentioned that you use it. Vex programming to program 
the robot, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so, how long have you been working on this robot? Uh, on our robot right now, we've been working on it since like November, the beginning of November, uh, all the way through now. Okay. Um, what else do you do in robotics? Uh, in robotics, uh, we talk to other robotic people, we gather uh, ideas and just bounce off how to improve our robot. We also use the internet and, well, we eat cookies. Um, so how do you join the robot? Uh, to join the robotic club, uh, you got to go to Mr. Gunderson and ask if you can join. Uh, right now, it might be a little hard to join, but next year there is going to be a class for it. And there's going to be more groups to join. Perfect. Well, Zach, thank you very much. Thanks, Anthony. Here we have Hunter with debate. Good morning. I'm Hunter Grass here in Grand Forks with uh, Miss Kalka. I'm just going to ask a couple questions about the Debate Club. So, Miss Kalka, what is Debate Club? How would you describe it? Well, we use the term team for debate. It's one of a it's a different co-curricular because we actually have coaches and we're different from other clubs because we travel and compete against schools, and so we are a traveling team. So. Um, I think it's different from other things because students are trying to um, win trophies and, and medals, so it's similar to sports in a lot of ways. Okay, and on a normal day in debate, what will you guys do? Like, what will you go over? So, we have three different um, forms of debate. There's World Schools, that's a, it's a group debate, like there are five people on a team. And then there's Lincoln Douglas debate, which is one-on-one. -on -one. And there's public forum debate, which is two people debating against two people. And twice a year we have topics. The topics come from the National Debate Association or National Speech and Debate Association. So the students write cases like you would if you were uh, an attorney. And then they debate against people and there's a format with when they speak and when they ask questions. All right. Is there anything you'd like to add? Anything you'd like to say here? Um, just that if you're interested at all, even if you're involved in other extracurriculars, I would encourage you to get involved with speech and debate and student congress because those are activities and teams that will stay with you for the rest of your life. All right. Ms. Kalki, everybody, thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome story, Hunter. Next, we have a story with Chris, the Swish DeMuth, giving us a rundown on the latest game be between Central and the Rats. Today. I'm going to talk about our basketball game we just played against Red River. Do you know we haven't beat them in four years? The main scorers for Central, Central were Devin Johnson with 25 points, Chris Samuth with 14 points, and Jacob Onsett with 7. Central also had more than 20 rebounds that game. Also, here are some highlights I'm showing about the game last night. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, we all know how the first half of the year flew by for us, but how was it for teachers? Sierra found out. So I'm here with one of our new teachers at Central this year, Mr. Lamberg. And if you want to spell out your name, so that Yeah, uh, L-A-N-D-B-U-R-G. What is it like to be a new teacher at Central? Being a new teacher at Central has been amazing. Between all the teachers and the students here, uh, it's been very welcoming. And it's been a pretty easy transition because I taught at Valley Middle School last year and a lot of those students end up coming to Central. And how has the first half of the year been for you? Interesting. Um, it's been a little bit stressful just being a new high school teacher, not having um, any of my material, having to kind of come up with a lot of my own stuff. Also getting used to the fact that I'm about as tall as a lot of the students here. I just, I feel so short. So that's, that's kind of interesting. And I look very young, so I kind of look like I fit in with the rest of the high schoolers. Some advice you would give to other new teachers? First of all, I think that the biggest thing you can do in teaching is developing a relationship with your students. I just don't think that any learning can take place unless you really um, have a comfortable environment in which you're uh, a part of. Second big piece of advice that I would give to new teachers is uh, go out there and try new things. Experiment. If a lesson blows up in your face, okay, whatever. Don't always 
uh, sit back on the same type of lesson. Are there any like other experiences you would want to share? One fun, more funny experience is uh, um, being observed by fellow teachers or principals. Don't be, don't be nervous about that. Things will happen. For instance, uh, my mentor teacher was observing me this year and of course the only time that he observes me is uh, me swearing in class on accident. How do you feel about like all your classes and students this year? Um, I feel like I am the luckiest person in the world. I have such a great um, set of students and the classes that I'm teaching. Thank you, Sierra. Hey, Lewis, I have a joke for you. What's that? Why don't we play poker in the jungle? I don't know. There's too many cheetahs. Hopefully Renee's story will be better than that joke. Probably not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, got him. What do computers snack on? Microchips. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my segment of the Central News Center. Today we will be going around telling people jokes to try and lighten their day. Let's go. <laughs> what do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. <laughs> Why do golfers wear two pairs of pants? Why? In case they get a hole in one. <laughs> Why did Adele cross the road? Uh, you know to say hello from the other, other side. side. Why don't you play poker in the jungle? Too many cheetahs. Can the stadium get hot after the game? Well, all the fans <laughs> left. Did you hear about the kidnapping at school? I did not hear about the kidnapping at school. It's okay. He woke up. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching and back to you boys. That was pretty funny, Renee. It's pretty good. Next up, we got Ricky himself talking about YouTube. All right, guys, I'm interviewing Noah about favorite YouTubers of 2017. Now, who is your favorite YouTuber of 2017? Of 2017, I'd say my favorite YouTuber has to be H3H3. Uh, I like iDubs because he's really funny and he has well-made videos. What's your favorite video of his? Um, he will be back. So it's about, like, it's about Jake Paul, obviously. And, like, he just straight roasts him. It's hilarious. I'm probably the content cop on Keemstar. Why is he your favorite YouTuber? Because he's just like super funny and like, like real. Like. Thank you, Ricky. If you guys are interested in the new play, tune in to Kylie talking about spam a lot. Monty Python's Spamalot. I am King Arthur. And what is that? What is it? Mm -hmm. It's the King Arthur. It's pretty <laughs> self explanatory. I'm in the ensemble and more specifically a Laker girl. What do you do as a Laker girl? We do a lot of dancing, um, a lot of dancing, and we just get to cheer on some of the knights of the round table. Comedic, enthusiastic, and flamboyant. Hilarious, stupid, and fun. <laughs> because I've always really enjoyed acting, and I think it's a really good experience to be part of a cast and to help create a show just from scratch. I've always liked doing Musicals, especially here at Central. Central's a great place. Definitely, it's a great experience for anyone. Yes, join the musical because it is fun and it's fun. Um, I like our big dance number, which is one of the biggest. But you'll have to watch it. Soon. When will we be able to see Spam a lot? March 8th through 10th. 2018. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alright, thanks Kylie. Alright, if you guys are not caught up on all your Marvel movies, check out Liam doing a review on Thor Ragnarok. 
What's your name? My name is Gabriel Randall. Ben Schneck. My name is Noah Aguilar. I am Mike Erickson. And so what would you rate Thor Ragnarok out of 10? I would rate it uh, probably about an 8. It was a pretty good movie, but I've seen better. I think it has like a 6. It doesn't really deserve like an 8 or a 9, just because it didn't live up to the hype that I thought it would. Uh, was it funny? It was, compared to the other Thor movies, very funny. And I liked a lot of the jokes in there. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Would you recommend it to a friend? If they're into the action kind of movies, I definitely would. But they're, if they're not, no. I would. It was a really good movie. I would definitely recommend it to someone, because, well, it's just a fun movie. Everyone's gonna love it. What did you think of the action? Uh, there was quite a bit of action, because, you know, it's a superhero movie. And personally, I liked it. The action was very macho v macho, fist fighting, pretty awesome, you know action. Just all the stuff you want to see out of a Marvel movie. The action was pretty good. A lot of action actually. Especially Hulk. So what was your favorite part? Um, I think I liked either the beginning when he was spinning around in the cage and the guy was trying to talk to him or when Hulk was acting like a little baby. I like Korg when he tries to start an uprising. Who is your favorite character? My favorite character is Korg. He's the dude that's made of rocks, and he's really funny. Hulk. Did it ever get boring? And if so, when? Um, the only times the movie got boring was probably when um, that axe dude was in the whole thing. Um, it, there was times that it would get a little boring, but then they'd throw in another action scene or. At the very end of the movie, when it was a giant fight scene, just like all the other ones, it was pretty typical. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, thanks, Liam. I'm definitely going to have to go see that one again. Definitely. Uh, next up, we got Carson going over wrestling. Well, good morning, Grand Fork Central High School. My name is Carson, as you can see on my jacket, and I'm a senior, second-year team captain on the wrestling team. No big deal, but... Um, Today I'm going to talk about the season a little bit, and uh, our record right now is eight and fifteen as a whole team, and uh, that's against East and Western teams. Which just Eastern teams, we're four and two, we're in fourth place in the EDC, and that puts us that makes that we make it as a state dual team, which is pretty dang cool if you ask me. I got four minutes to do this. So uh, we haven't made it as a state dual team in a couple years. So it's a pretty big accomplishment for us. So um, I'm going to show you some live action on the mat. Back to you, Lewis. Come on, Carson. Good story, Carson. All right, that's all we have for you guys today for Central News Center. I'm Jonah. I'm Lewis. See you next time.